Get beautiful steady shots every time with the Amazon Basics 60 inch lightweight tripod with bag. This lightweight tripod is perfect for cameras weighing up to 6.6 .6 pounds and is compatible with most video cameras, GoPros, and digital cameras with a quick release mounting plate. It has two built in view levels and a three way head to allow tilt and swivel motions. The legs can telescope from 20 inches to 48 inches. Plus, the center post can be lifted to reach a height of 60 inches so you can rise above obstacles. And it includes a carrying bag. You can easily take the Amazon Basics 60-inch lightweight tripod with bag with you wherever you go. as they help you to take amazing photos. But packing different tripods for different devices are not only impractical but also impossible. UBSI's 60-inch TR60BK camera tripod can be the ultimate travel tripod for you as it is made of lightweight aluminum and can take up to 5 kg of load which is enough to hold any DSLR and mirrorless cameras with heavy lenses and is also compatible with your iPhone or Android phones. It also comes with a Bluetooth remote controller that works with both iOS and Android. The TR60 max height is up to 150cm and comes with a convenient carry bag, phone clip and universal 1x4 screw to support most DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It has a smooth pan head with 360 degree rotation and freely adjustable angles that allows you to shoot panoramic photos or videos without limitations.
The tripod is made of eco-friendly rubber feet, durable aluminum alloy legs, and flip-lock tier 60 tripod ensures stable and easy maneuver. Weighing only 1.5 kg, this tripod can easily be your go-to travel tripod since it is lightweight and has compatibility to multiple devices. Hey everyone, my name is Logan Rando and I'm an indie filmmaker and today we are unboxing the Gikoto 58 inch travel tripod. Now I got this tripod because my Viltrox tripod, which is an absolute beast heavy duty tripod for a budget, is often too tall for my needs. I shoot a lot of narrative film and when you're shooting actors you often have to get on their level to do something cinematic. So I've been doing all my lower shots virtually handheld with my gimbal. So although it's stabilized, it's still less than optimal and it wastes a lot of time on set. So in the spirit of upping production value, speeding things up on set, um, I got this bad boy. And coincidentally, I'm gonna be taking it on a bit of an excursion this weekend because I'm going to be shooting a documentary on ice fishing. So after we unbox it, we're gonna put this thing to the test and see what it can do out in the field. So let's get started and let's get this bad boy unboxed. So here it is. Now I'll have to admit, prior to unboxing the Gikoto AT24, I was apprehensive. When it comes to film gear, you're often taking a pretty huge risk by skimping out and opting for the budget choice. However, I decided to trust the positive reviews I was seeing and figure that if it didn't meet my needs, I could always return it. First out of the box is the travel bag. The zipper feels nice, nothing that feels like it could break easily. The material of the bag is a light plasticky feeling synthetic that looks like it may repel water but not necessarily be fully waterproof. Full disclosure, I haven't tested it against water but upon examination, I wouldn't trust it. Much to my relief, the tripod comes fully assembled and wrapped in a plastic bag. It's always nice to be able to play with and test a product right out of the box with little to no assembly. The only other contents included are the instruction manual, a promotional flyer, an Allen wrench, always nice to have a spare one of those, and a Gikoto membership card? Yeah, I was confused too when I saw that at first. It seemed like a throwaway, but I was curious, so I took a quick look and was surprised to find out that it's actually something useful. It contains a one-time 30% off coupon on a Gikoto product as well as instructions for registering with their site to get further discounts. I'll probably end up using the coupon, so I kept the card. And now to take a look at the tripod itself. Unfolding it right out of the bag is quick and easy. It's got some weight to it, not heavy in the sense that it could be cumbersome, but enough weight to suggest some build quality. The aluminum legs and ball head feel really nice in my hands. The latch locks, responsible for unlocking the legs for extension and retraction, feel sturdy and operate smoothly, despite being plastic. Some of the other components, like the mounting platform on the ball head and some of the adjustment knobs, are plastic as well. However, they all have relatively smooth action for the price point and appear to be well cut. The removable monopod leg screws on and off very easily. Not something I'll likely use very often, but it's nice to know the option for a removable monopod is there, should I need it. The only latches that feel a bit stiff are the metal orange latches at the top of the leg, responsible for adjusting the angles of the leg from the shaft. It took me a little playing around to realize that in order to adjust the angle of a leg, it's easiest to first push the leg in a bit, and then push on the angle latch with your thumb to adjust. I really, really like this feature, as it allows for some serious versatility when adjusting height. Additionally, the shaft of the tripod that holds the ball head can be adjusted with the use of two twist lock knobs. The knobs operate the same as those on a boom pole in that you twist clockwise to lock and counterclockwise to find that sweet spot that allows for length adjustment. Not my favorite mechanism as I often have a hard time in a rush finding that sweet spot, but they work just fine with a little practice. At the base of the shaft is a hook for hanging weight for stabilization. I'm super happy to see this up because at an ultra light 2.8 pounds, this tripod could very easily be knocked over out in the field. More on that later when I take this ice fishing on upstate New York's Lake George. 
The ball head, despite being a combination of aluminum and plastic, actually feels quite nice and seems to have a relatively smooth movement for the price. With 360 degrees of panning, a knob that loosens the ball head for rotation in the X, Y, and Z axes, your options for angling your camera are very extensive. Further, the tripod legs can be reversed 180 degrees for inverted shooting. This, to me, is really cool. You can get about as low as you'll possibly want with the Gikoto. This is a nice feature for macro shots of ground level subjects like flora and insects. The camera mounting platform detaches and reattaches quite easily with the use of the platform locking knob located at the top of the ball head. I'll be attaching my Joby ball head to the tripod so that I can quickly swap out all my gear that has the Joby mounting plate attached. Okay, so first impressions are looking pretty good. The build quality is decent with the aluminum. The action on the legs is really nice. It's super lightweight. Uh, I can assemble it and take it apart really quickly. And it gets pretty compact when it's all together. So it's only one thing to do and that's put this thing to the test in the field. So tomorrow I am going to do an interior shoot and then this weekend, I'm going to take this thing out on a frozen lake upstate New York's Lake George and I'm gonna shoot a documentary about ice fishing. So we'll have some great data to see what this thing can actually do. And uh, after that, I'll give you my impressions and a preliminary review. So let's go. The Gikoto almost immediately proved its worth during the interior film shoot. Shots like this, where I'm getting on the level of a very low coffee table to focus on a bottle of wine were previously impossible unless done handheld with my gimbal. Having such a versatile tripod allowed me to get all the shots I needed for the evening scene within the allotted time. This is absolutely huge for me, as time is the most valuable resource on set. I did unfortunately find that without stabilizing the tripod with weight, some camera adjustments like manually focusing the lens to achieve a rack focus, like I'm doing right here, causes the tripod to shake. Nothing some weight and post-production stabilization can not fix though. And now for the Lake George shoot. Boy was it cold, and boy was it windy. This was essentially the gauntlet of all tests for the Gikoto. After setting up, I immediately noticed that the tripod was being displaced by the wind. I decided to weigh it down with a few small backpacks. This worked quite well and seemed to solve the problem. You can see in this shot just how windy it was by the snowflakes that are blowing almost completely sideways. Still, the camera remains quite steady on the tripod. Being able to quickly adjust the height on the fly allowed me to get shots like this without missing a beat. I even gave a pan a try with the ball head. It's not too bad in a jiffy, but could likely use some post-production stabilization. There you have it guys, my review of the Gikoto AT24 travel tripod. Overall, I definitely recommend this tripod. It's a great solution when you need something lightweight that doesn't take up too much space in your camera bag. Overall, I gotta give it a couple thumbs up. So, if you like what you saw today, go ahead and like the video and even subscribe if you feel so inclined. Oh, and be sure to drop me a comment below and let me know if there's any other budget gear you'd like me to review. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for some more great content.